Let's get started. Welcome to the New Breed, everybody. This is another episode. This is the third episode official uh, for what's about to come is the IMC TV. This is going to be one of the channels on the TV station as we continue to create. So every day I jump on here and I speak and, you know, I've become a, a speaker toward the world, but most importantly, a speaker of my life. And if there's anybody that's going to tell your story, if there's anybody that's going to, you know, give the conditions of your life, it's got to be you. So first and foremost, you have to become the vessel of your message, the messenger of your life, because who better is going to tell your story than yourself? Who's going to tell the journey that you've overcome in order to know? So the world gets to know you. Look, the world only knows you based on your ability to communicate about you. Outside of that, they're assuming, they're judging, they're criticizing, and they're condemning because they don't know why you decided to do what you did. They don't know your path. They don't know your light. They don't know your reasons. But it's your ability in communication to give the world the language so that they have the eyes to see you, so they can otherize you, because otherwise they won't ever see you. They're going to have ideas of who you are. They're going to have judgments of who you are. You see, at some point in my life, I changed my image, right? You know. We spend our whole lives trying to create an identity. We grow up from the years of, let's say, 1 to 18, right? From 1 to 18, you're trying to find yourself. You're trying to build an identity. You're trying to fit in in this life. Some of us grew up in you know, poorer neighborhoods. Some of us grew up in richer neighborhoods. Some of us had bad upbringings. Some of us had great upbringings. You see, regardless of where it is you come from, regardless, regardless of where it is you, you know, what path you walked, at the end of the day, everybody's trying to find who they are in this life. Because the last time I checked, I don't know where the fuck I came from. Yeah, Fernando was given the name of Fernando. He comes from two Mexican parents, Maricela and Guatemoc. Where the fuck did I come from? Like, you know, they just gave me a name. I grew up in Baldwin Park, California. A Mexican, Hispanic culture. I didn't choose any of this shit, dude. And here we go on a storyline, right? He grows up in Baldwin Park, California. He has certain people he meets in his life. He goes to certain schools, right? He's around certain people. He has a certain lifestyle. He eats certain foods. He's given a certain religion to believe in, right? Everything in Fernando's storyline was given to him without his own choice. And then at some point in our life, we have this awakening, right? We have this realization that says, hey, what the fuck, man? I've been in a fog for the last 18 years. Something inside of me is not congruent with who I really am. You see, I was given a name that I didn't choose. I was given parents that I didn't choose. I was given a lifestyle, a culture. I was given certain upbringing, certain friends that I didn't choose any of this shit. Well, where's my choice? When, when do I get to choose my life? When do, I get a tell, when do I get a chance to tell the world exactly who the fuck I am in this life? And that's one of the crossroads that everybody faces at some point is an identity crisis. You know, society calls it, society calls it a mid-age crisis, right? Well, shit, I had a mid-age crisis as early as I can remember. What the fuck was happening in my life? Who am I? Where do I come from? Something's going on with the wife over here. Where do I come from? Where did I, like, where, like, ask yourself, where the fuck did you come from, dude? You've been being a certain person your whole life, but where, who are you, dude? Who are you? Like, if we really look at it, do we even know our parents? Like, do you really know your parents? Genuinely, not, not the relationship, mom and dad, but actually know their story, actually know who they are, actually know what they're interested in. Do you even know them? Because everywhere I look, I see a bunch of strangers, man. I don't know who the fuck I grew up with. I don't know who, I don't know these people. But as time goes forward, as I start to learn more and more of the essence of me, I get to look at mankind and humanity and all of those around me and say, damn, I'm, I'm really starting to get you. I'm really starting to get who you are. I can see you now. But in order to get there, first, you got to look inside. It's an introspection. You got to intro, look inside of you to find you. How do you do that? How does one get there? Well, that sounds great, Fernando, but how the fuck do I introspect, man? How do I get to know me? What's my potential? What's my purpose here in this life? Because these are questions I've always had, man. What the fuck am I doing here? What are you doing here? 
Is our purpose in life just to work another normie fucking nine to five job, slave away, building someone else's dreams and desires? Or is our purpose to align ourselves with people who maybe in the past life we were aligned with? Maybe in another life, you and I were probably like the Spartans training every day. Or you and I were probably Egyptian gods and goddesses. Or maybe you and I were Aztec kings and queens. Where, where do we come from? You see, we're living a life that's been created already for us. You were given a name. You were given a birth certificate. You were given a religion, a culture, a family that you had zero choice in. Okay, my brother, where do you come from now? You're here trying to create before you even know who you are. And one of the biggest mistakes I saw in my life that I was creating was I was trying to create something. I was trying to create a character in life before I even got to know me. Because I was running away from my past. I was running away from who I grew up with, you know, who I grew up being. You see, I, I believe there's actually scientific data on this from the ages of one to four. You already know who you are. If we ever look at a baby or a child, a baby and a child already has so much life and expression inside of it, right? It knows exactly what it wants. It's tapped into something that when we see a baby, we're like, oh man, we want to protect it. A baby is the most precious commodity. It's the most precious entity. It's innocent. It's beautiful. It's clean, right? Instinctively, we want to take care of a baby. We want to you know, protect the baby. Oh, make sure you don't drop the baby. Hey, make sure you carry the baby right, right? Immediately, we go into this mode to take care of humanity, take care of life. And then at some point in your life, people stop giving a shit about you, right? You grow up and they think that you at 18 have it all figured out now. Go to college, go learn some education. If anything, college destroys people. It does. Fuck college. Fuck public education. It's never made you and I better. Now, some people will be like, oh, well, I think college was some of the best experiences in my life. Bullshit, dude. Bullshit. I went to college for one year. It was terrible. I was in classrooms with people and, and learning subjects, Asian American film study. What the fuck is that? I don't want to learn about Asian American film study. I don't give a shit about it. And I'm paying $5,000 for this fucking class. Get the fuck out of here. Shove that shit up your ass, dude. If every day you have to show up and get out of your bed and drag out of it, not inspired, not wanting to do, go to your job, go to your work, what the fuck are you doing wasting your moments? What are you doing? Why are you doing some shit that you don't like? Now, I know people will be like, well, I have to take care of bills. I understand that. And we all have to have a job. If you're a man watching this, yes, you do have to have a job. You have to know what you're doing every day. Yes, you have to take care of your responsibilities. As a man, always take care of your responsibilities. Be more responsible in life. Identify what your responsibilities are. First and foremost, you. You're responsible for you. If you're watching this, you're responsible for you. Nobody's going to come and save you. Captain America isn't going to come down and say, hey, man, you're the chosen one. Morpheus from the Matrix isn't looking for you type, typewriting. You're saying, hey, jump out of here, jump out of there. You, you, right now, you know, some robots are going to come get you. You're the chosen one, man. There's this quote or saying um, that here in IMC Nation we've adopted is, we're, we're, cho we're chosen because we choose to be. You're chosen because you choose to be. You're going to be great because you choose to be great. You're going to be disciplined because you choose to be disciplined. You're going to be ethical because you choose to be ethical. Now, these values are reserved not for the animal, but for the God. The animal is operating on such a low vibration, just like anything. It eats, shits, fucks, and sleeps. Now, most people are operating off that frequency, that vibration, just grazing by. Yeah, close that. Close the window. Yeah, slide it. We got the neighbor snooping in. Fucking neighbor, nosy neighbor. <laughs> but look, the animal eats, fucks, sleeps, and shits, right? That's our animal body. However, no, open it more because I can't see. That's fine right there. She's walking her dog. Oh, she's leaving. I don't like to lecture and say fuck, you know, cuss and shit. That's my neighbor. 
However, at some point, we got to transcend the animal condition, right? Right now, you're, you're suffering in some stage of your life. You're either suffering financially, you're suffering, you're suffering because, you know, you're not having sex, you're suffering because you don't have trustworthy people, you're suffering in some extreme, right? And the Buddha says, life is, all, all of life is suffering. Okay, all right. If all of life is suffering, then let's take a look at what it is that you're suffering at. Where is it that you're suffering? Where's your suffering? Where's that pain inside that's containing or holding your soul, repressing your soul? Because right now, all of us are confined in some way. If we were free, we'd be liberated. We'd be enlightened. We'd be the illuminated ones, the enlightened ones. The enlightened one is the one in the light. But why is there so much darkness and pain inside of you? Why is there so much suffering inside of you? Now, again, you came into a life as a spiritual being into some storyline that was already given to you. You had zero choice. People were in your life that shouldn't have been in your life. Some people invalidated you. They invalidated the being. Now, more and more as I continue to go forward in my life and my evolution, I see that, hey, dude, I'm just getting closer and closer to who I am to my essence and getting rid of all the things that I'm not, all the things that was pushed on Fernando, because that's not who he is. I'm not even Fernando. What the fuck is that? I didn't choose that. Now, that's how the world sees me and associates me. They associate me by my body, by my government name. They associate me by my job. Same thing they're doing with you. You become, we become these identities. Now, how do we transcend that? How do we, you know, get rid of this just animalistic body right? This body is an animal body and it belongs to planet earth. This body comes from earth. The being, where does the being come from? Where, where does this being that's expressing itself come from? Because you have that too. Inside of you, there's a spirit. Where does it come from? Why inside of you do you know that there's such a greater potential than the ordinary average life that everybody's living? Why is it inside of you that you can hear these words and register that there's a truth behind it? Because I must be speaking to somebody who's significant inside. I must be speaking to someone who's great inside, someone who must have been some figure, some spiritual being in a past life. I don't know how to measure these things, whether you believe in it or not. However, I know inside of me, there's a voice inside, a longing inside that knows it's much bigger than just Fernando's little fucking story. Little Fernando has these desires and these wants, right? But how much of it is really my choice? Because the more I look at it, the more I start to realize I don't really have a choice in this life. And I don't know if you do either. Because regardless of, look, life's going to happen regardless the way it's going to happen. Tomorrow, who knows whether you get a call that someone that you love is gone. Okay, your fate changes forever now. What if you lose a friend or you make a new person? Today, you could meet a new person and it changes the fate of your world. Your fate is not the same anymore. You seem more authentic than ever. Yeah, believe me, it's, it's, uh, it, I'm unveiling a lot of shit that's no longer me. And so I'm just speaking out of whatever it is I'm connected to, right? And it's, that's the thing that I'm speaking about. I'm speaking from a place that I don't know where these things come from. It just, I become the vessel of a message that seems to be already inside of me. You see? You trying to be somebody in this life is clogging who you already are. You trying to accumulate shit from the outside is clogging what you already have inside. The answers are within, my friends. Everything that you're seeking is within. The things that you're suffering from is not you. Let's say you're like, well, I'm, I'm heavy. I don't like being fat, right? I grew up with that, that suffering too. I didn't like how much body mass I had on my body, right? I was insecure about it. I didn't like it. For that reason, that must have not been me. That was Fernando's storyline. You know, they fed him food. He started growing and he had bad habits and bad discipline because he was around people with bad habits and bad discipline. Imagine right now, if you grew up in a family that was extremely disciplined, you grew up in a, in a family that was dedicated monks, right? They were on a 24 hour spiritual process. From the morning they woke up, it was a ritual. They woke up, they, they slept on the floor, they made their beds. It was the most important thing. 
In the morning, they burn an incense and they send out prayers to the universe. They thank the Divine Mother. They thank the Holy Father for another day, for another breath, for, the, for another moment. They study, they read, they appreciate their life every day. Then they go out and service mankind. First, they service themselves, right? Imagine you woke up and you grew up with a family that first they had the idea that, hey, the morning time is my morning ritual. And in the morning ritual, I'm gonna take care of me first. This is my time that I've allotted, that I've dedicated, the time that I've continued to, to invest in me. Before I go out and speak to another human being in life, I'm gonna work on me first. Imagine if society actually had this, but what's society's reality? People wake up just in time to get to get ready for work. They're rushing, they go get their coffee, they're on traffic, their fucking heart's pounding, they have all anxiety because they're gonna get late and they have all these million thoughts running their head, they're stressed out. They're have, dude, that's the world we live in. It's a world of anxiety, it's a world of stress, it's a world of pressure, it's a world of, oh, you gotta go get it, you gotta go get up and do your shit, you gotta push, 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 force, 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 force. Dude, chill the fuck out. Chill the fuck out. Why? Because, dude, what the fuck are you rushing? Why are you rushing life? Tomorrow's going to come, I promise. There's going to be another day, unless it ends today for you. Let things take time. That if you're going to plant a seed to sprout a new, fr uh, new fruit, it's going to take some time. That if today you want change and you're going to integrate a new habit, Plant the seed. It's going to take time. You're, every day, you're going to have to water it. Every day, you're going to have to nourish it. Every day, you're going to have to put it in the sunlight. And as time goes forward, the fruit will sprout. And then you get to reap the benefits of your own labor. That's what makes life precious. It's not so much the result, but it's the journey of it. We fall in love with the journey of it. Maybe right now you can't see your results, right? You're, you're in present time and you can't see that if you're looking to improve your body or improve your financial condition, maybe you're looking to improve your friendships or your relationships. Okay, what, do you, what did you do today to harvest your, your fruits? What did you do today to plant the good seeds and water and nurture what it is you're trying to grow in your life? Today, were you more compassionate? Take a look. Today, were you more kind to yourself? Today, were you more respectful, more honorable of yourself? Take a look, because inside your mind, there's a voice playing in your head. Is it, is it her, is that voice destroying you? Is that voice making you insignificant? What is that voice telling you inside? All right. You know, recently, you know, I've had a, I've had a, you know, internally, a lot of introspection, look inside, right? I'm going to end Instagram soon. Recently, I've had to look inside a lot. You know, I've been tested. I've been very tested on the outside in a lot of areas, right? In a lot of areas, but I like that. The pressure of life, uh, when life starts to get difficult, that's when we get to see your character. You see, everybody's trying to feel good, feel happy, be positive. However, when adversity hits, that's when we get to see your practice. That's when we get to see your meditation. That's when we get to see your yoga. Yoga is union. Meditation is inner silence. Meditation is quiet. It's a still pond. So when times get tough and you start to feel the adversity of life, is your pond full of ripples, waves, or is your pond just silent? Now, maybe right now you're dealing with life and your mind is all over the place. Well, this is the practice, man. The practice is, hey, do you have a ritual? A ritual of meditation, a ritual of yoga, a physical practice so that you can practice each and every day so that when life gets tough and things get difficult, you have something to bring the inner silence. You have something to bring the inner, the inner healing. Because so much of life is so much pressure and resistance and tension we live in a world where people are full of anxiety, full of tension, and that's the people you're out there dating. That's the people you're out there mating with. That's the people that you're out there doing business with. I don't want to do business with people who are not still inside. I don't want to mate with somebody who's not at ease inside. I don't want to mate with somebody who's full of violence and, you know, tension and, you know, all that energy is going to come onto me now. 
And that's what you're doing. But first and foremost, recognize that if there's a silence inside, if there's a, a, a stillness inside, a certainty inside, that that is going to create that effect in your world, in your universe. Universe is one song. Uni, verse. Uni, one, verse. We hear verses in songs. We hear verses in the, in the scriptures, right? Ancient scriptures are written in verse. The gods speak in verse. So it's a universe. It's a one song, one truth. So how do we tap into this universe? How do we tap into the potentiality? I know I'm using beautiful language. Now, this is a free episode. So if you guys want to learn practices and actual techniques, right? If you guys want to learn some real stuff, that's what all the paid events shit is for. However, this is for you guys to look inside and start to see to question your reality, question what you got going on right now. I did. I started questioning the people around me. I started questioning, hey, are these the people that are going to get me to where I need to be in life? And as I started to evolve and my awareness started to expand, I started to look at my universe and say, whoa, this is not the right reality for me. Why? Because I'm evolving. And as you evolve, those that aren't meant in your next evolution will sever away and those who will will continue to rise above with you that's all i know who's meant in my life if you have the question well are they meant to be in my life well take a look are they in your life (laughs) then they're there are they meant to be in my life will they be here forever who knows whoever is here is here right now right and that's what i'm measuring i'm measuring present time present moment whoever is here with me right now that's who i create with and whoever's not meant to be here will one day go and it's okay because that's life. I'm not here to take from life. I'm here to give to life. What? My truest expression. And so are you. You're here to give life the most authentic expression. What if you just started telling life exactly how you felt inside? That voice inside that ah, has been wanting to come out. What if you started telling people your your truth? What's going to happen? What are you afraid of? Well, they're probably not going to like me if they knew who I was inside. Okay, then whoever doesn't like you isn't meant to be there. Whoever has some sort of judgment of your true inner voice isn't meant to be in your life. What are you resisting? Why are you holding on to people who aren't meant to be in your life? That's so stupid. You see, one of the biggest freedoms that I realized in my life was let me speak my values to life and create the ripples, right? You now send out my, you send out your communication and it goes out to the world, right? And those who receive the message will either gravitate towards you or go away from you, resist you. And that's what I want. You want to know who the enemies in your life are. They'll come out, believe me. You start speaking your truth and you start sharing exactly what you feel inside, the enemies will start to show their face. I want to know who's my enemy. One of the biggest mistakes is thinking, well, I don't want people to feel wrong about me. Yes, you want to know who's not going to stand for you. At some point, you got to burn everything in your life. And after the flames go away, you'll still see who's still standing there with you. The problem is, is you're not, you're afraid, you resist going after your life. You resist looking at the darkest, the dark things in your life. You're going to be trapped by it for your whole life. How many people go 20, 30, 40, 50 years stuck with secrets inside? I don't want to have a secret. I want to be transparent inside more and more. Clean my system up so I'm not withholding anything anymore. I'm not holding on to shit that doesn't belong to me. I'm not holding on to old stories, old friends, old habits, old patterns. Nah, all I know about life is the only constant in life is change. And I'm here to evolve and change with the seasons. I'm here to evolve and change with with my evolution. Value your evolution. Oh, she's not in my life anymore. Woe is me. Good. Good. Good they're not in your life anymore. They're not there for a reason. One last thing that I want to bring up is there's a shortage of real men in this life. More and more I see it. Look, if you're a man right now watching this shit, you need to recognize your value in the society. I know society's made you feel like you're insignificant. You know, 
society's made men think that they're not great in this life. Society's made men into these weird ass symbols, these weird ass images. Like we start to look at men in society right now and it's disgusting. It's so pathetic to see men. Athletes look like fucking trash. Every guy's looking like a fag, dude. We go, whoa, whoa, you fag, whoa, are you gay pride, bro? Are you homophobic? No, I'm not homophobic. However, I am a man and I don't believe that pushing my sexuality saying, well, maybe I should, maybe I should say, I love being straight. Hey, having sex with the opposite sex is some cool shit. We should have a whole month to celebrate opposite sex, right? Why is there a whole month of gay pride? What the fuck? I just watched a video earlier today. It was like a drag, drag, drag queen thing. And there's little kids. The first kid's like, he's wearing a gay pride shirt and he's all like dark as fuck. Whose parents put them there? These kids did not choose to be there. I guarantee if you ask all those kids, hey, what do you want to do today, Donnie and Sally? Oh, let's go to Disneyland or let's go to Legoland or let's go play some to the park or let's go play some basketball. Or let's go do something fun. Whose fucking parents brought them there? See, that kid and that girl are going to grow up in the same world you and I are in, right? And they're going to have all these impressions of their past. And just like you and I, they're going to have to look at their life and be like, what the fuck? What happened here? How did, how did I end up here? Who brought me here? So how much of the choices of your life did you choose and decide? Probably very little, man. Very little. Okay, then. Now it's time for us to take ownership of our life. Now it's time for us to be responsible for our life. You know, I read this beautiful quote that says, you live two lives. I really think I live a million lives. I don't know. I've lived so many lives. It's unreal. My 25 years of existence, I've lived so many lives. However, for the sake of the quote, oh, fuck. Hold on. Let me sit. My legs are fucking going numb I'm sitting down here. The quote says, you live two lives. One, the life that you're given. And two, the life that you choose. And I think it's a great concept to just apply is that, hey, you were given a life. That was your life sentence, right? And you were given an identity. You were given a certain upbringing. You were given a certain name, certain conditions. And that's, that was the life you were given, right? And you did the best you could with that life. Okay, now where you are today, what's the life that you want to create? What's the life you want to tell the world exactly who you are now? It's, is it going to take courage? Yeah, absolutely. Is it going to take discipline? Yeah, absolutely. But see, what other life do you want to live? Do you want to live the life that you've been living your entire life? Or do you want to finally tell the world who the fuck you are in this life? If you're a man, you better step the fuck up, man. You better step up, dude. These women are not okay. These children are not going to be okay in this world. This world is fucking far off, far off its values, far off. Just go to the store, go to Victoria's Secret and look how disgusting these quote unquote models are. Go to Target and look at the fucking billboards and look at these models. Why is everybody fat, gap tooth, gay? That's beauty now? That's not beauty. They've manipulated what beauty is. So now a beautiful woman who's soft, who's delicate, who has beautiful facial features, she carries herself well, she's elegant, she's graceful, is now being told that the new brand of beauty is some ugly ass sloth, lazy looking thing, just so some people who have zero discipline, zero values in life, zero sense of understanding can feel good about themselves. No, fuck that. What culture is this? This is a circus for all I see. So who's going to be the people that step up and change? And men? What? Men are supposed to look like these fucking weird ass value. Like, dude, what, what? Men, what the fuck are you doing in this culture, dude? What happened to the real warriors? The philosophers, the men of knowledge and wisdom. The men who are dedicated. The men who take care of their families. The men who make decisions can protect their women and children. A man's responsibility is to protect a woman and to protect the children because they're not safe in this world. They're not safe in previous worlds. They're not safe in this world. So society has these agendas. Well, a woman doesn't need a man. Okay, let's see how successful you are in life. Well, women can make a lot of money. Yeah, okay, you have a lot of money, but let's see how happy you are in this life. 
Go be miserable drinking your Mai Tais and your, your, your fucking wines by yourself at night, crying with your little poochie next to you. Do you want to live that life? And if you do, then go ahead. But I don't. I want to be filled with good people in my life, friends that I can trust, people that care about me, people that respect me and value me, people that I can trust and call upon and know that they have my back. Where are the real friends at? You know what a real friend is? What a loyal, honest friend is? One that, when they're not around you, speak positively about you. And you know what type of friends I want to have? That if someone's talking bad about me behind my back, they'll defend me and they become me in that moment because that's the type of friend I am. I'm the type of friend that if someone's talking bad about you and you're my friend, you're my ally, and that moment I become you and I protect you. I protect your reputation. I protect your name because you're not there. And if you're my friend, I expect the same thing from you too. If you know my character, if you know my essence, if I share my mind, if I share my heart, if I share my soul with you, then damn it, there's a respect called loyalty here. There's a value, right? Where's the people of values in this life? But see, kids aren't being taught this. They're taught, you know, what society tells them. All right, Instagram, that's it for you guys. Can you put caption at the new breed? And then at the bottom, like put all my hashtags like I'm Nation, mm -hmm. FC Mentality, Fernando Coro, the new breed. Yeah, you get it, just the helper. All right, any questions? What's up, everybody? Let's get Instagram off there. Open it up for everybody here. Let's chop it up for a couple more minutes. What's going on with everybody here? And if not, I'll just lecture for a little bit more and then uh, I'll switch it off. I'll tell you what, guys, there's some real fucking value when you're a strong man, when you can speak your mind and speak your truth. Practice that shit every day. Nothing else should be practiced outside of you expressing you today. And you're like, well, I don't like my character. Well, that's your practice. Practice on working on liking you first and foremost. You got to like you. You got to like the way you look. You got to like the way you sound. You got to like the way you carry yourself. You got to like what you do. You got to like everything about you. Fall in love with you again, man. And don't do it for women. Don't do it for money. Don't do it for other people to be validated. Do it for you first and foremost. What do you want to look like? If this was a video game and we're playing Mortal Kombat and you got to select your own character, would you select you the way you look right now? I see tattoo addicts now. I'm sure he would. He has a cool ass tattoo in an anime, you know, has piercings. He looks dangerous. He looks like a, you know, Wolverine or some shit, right? Would you choose you as a character in a Mortal Kombat game? What attributes would you have? If you were in a video game, do you have the ability to box? What's your stance? What's your warrior stance? Do you have jujitsu abilities? Muay Thai abilities? Are you like uh, the yogi, Dalism, whatever his name is? What's your character? What, what, what characteristics do you have? What attributes do you have? Are you good with guns? Are you good with knives? Are you a nunchuck guy? Who are you? What's your character? Are you a big sumo? I see Zothis. Zothis would be like a sumo wrestler. Hey, Zothis, sumo wrestler is a fucking savage. I don't want to fight a sumo wrestler. Fuck that. I don't care what kind of jujitsu, kind of boxing you have. You're going to need a gun against a sumo wrestler. So you're going to need like, two guns at least. He, he grabs you, you're, he's, that's it. Hulk smash, bro. Fuck that. All right. Any last questions? If not, we'll end it. We'll end it here and we'll, pro, we'll proceed with the rest of our day. Cool. All right, everybody, I'll see you guys on the next one, all right? Be the best, fuck the rest.